Underneath this marker lies one of Auburn's most prominent and fascinating characters, a graduate of the Virginia Military Institute, where he unhappily studied under Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson. James Henry Lane served as a Brigadier General in the Confederate Army, fighting with distinction in nearly all of the major battles in the East, before surrendering with Robert E. Lee at Appomattox Courthouse, Virginia, in April 1865. Ironically, it was some of Lane's North Carolinians who accidentally shot Stonewall Jackson during the Battle of Chancellorsville. And it is, unfortunately, this for which he is most remembered today. When the war ended, he tried teaching and farming before taking a position at the Virginia Agricultural and Mechanical College, now Virginia Tech. Before he was involved in a violent argument with the college's president. As a result, both men eventually were forced to leave. In June 1882, he was offered a job at the now burgeoning Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical College in Auburn, now Auburn University, as a professor of engineering. Nonetheless, Lane always considered himself a soldier, not an academic. A favorite prank of upperclassmen was to send a young, innocent freshman to ask a question of Professor Lane. His response was always, young man, I'll have you know I follow General Lee, and I'll have no upstart freshman calling me Professor. I am General Lane, and don't you forget it. When not teaching, he spent many hours writing about the war and defending the reputation of the men who fought under him. One year, a professor of history named George Petrie fell in love with Lane's daughter Mary and eventually married her. It was this same George Petrie who started Auburn's first football team, wrote the Auburn Creed, and established the school's official colors as burnt orange and blue. Petrie is also remembered as the founder of Auburn's Department of History. When General Lane passed away in September 1907, he was buried here in Pine Hill Cemetery. Next to him is his wife, his daughter Mary, and her husband, George Petrie. Here, Auburn's past and present come together for those who believe in Auburn and love it. After four long years of war, the citizens of Auburn, Alabama, looked to the future with expectancy and trepidation. So overwhelming was the emotional, physical, and economic weight of war that the very framework of Southern society now collapsed. Gone was the slave-based labor force upon which so much of Auburn was built. Dead were so many of the young men that once populated the burgeoning town. And worthless was the Confederate money that once flowed so freely. Simply put, at war's end, Auburn was in shambles and its disintegration was reflective of the hundreds of other hamlets and crossroads across the South. It was 10 years before a new home was constructed. The once proud East Alabama Mail College was reflective of the struggling state of the town at large. Though it reopened in 1866, the poor economic state of the college forced many returning professors to accept half or none of their original pre-war pay. Student enrollments in the years following the war were meager as many had died and many more were unable to afford tuition and housing after the collapse of the Confederacy. Somehow, this tiny liberal arts college hobbled its way through these desperate years, struggling, like much of the rest of the South, to make sense of this new world. In 1872, at the height of Reconstruction, it became a state-supported institution, the Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical College, funded through the federal government's Moral Land Grant Act. Eventually, the college, the town of Auburn, and the South itself would survive and then thrive, its future forever hearkening back to this seminal period. <laughs>